I had an opportunity to get this old external US Robotics 56K modem for about $10 and I thought, why not? Even though I don't have a phone line and don't know what I'm really going to do with it, but I can do some experiments with it. It's got a phone line jack and a pass through for a phone and some configuration dip switches described here on the back and a 25 pin serial cable and the wall adapter came with it. But what am I supposed to do with this? Well the first thing is to try it out. Even though I don't have a phone line I can still make sure it's not dead on arrival. So powering it on, well I get that light so it's alive and as for hooking it up, well I don't even have a serial cable, but I did find this old USB to serial DB9 port. So you plug this in to USB and it will give RS-232 9 pin serial port access. But I don't see any markings that tell me what brand is this and what kind of drivers do I need. So I'm going to have to look that up, but when I do figure it out, I should have a 9-pin serial port, but I need to go to a 25-pin serial port. Well, I found this old 9-pin female connector, PC board mount, through hole, and this is not going to line up on a breadboard, and I don't have some sort of a breakout board. So my thought would be to plug it in and use DuPont female to male headers so that I can hook it up to a breadboard. So if I do this for all nine pins, and then I have some nice breadboard friendly headers, I can do something like that. And for the rest of the connection, I tried sticking the pins directly in the 25 pin serial jack, but it wasn't holding steady. So I found this old 25 pin male DB connector on a ribbon cable where the other end has 0.1 inch two row header. So now I can plug this into the back of the modem and use DuPont cables to pair up with the DB9 header. But how do I connect it? Since I had no idea what kind of serial to USB interface I had, I started Googling and I saw a picture of a blue translucent device that looked very similar to mine from StarTech. So the drivers for that are prolific and I'm using a Mac so I went with those drivers and it seemed to work. In retrospect I probably could have tried installing a bunch of different USB serial drivers like FTDI and Scilabs as well as Prolific and if there's any others Assuming they don't all conflict, something would eventually work, but this worked fine. My next issue was I don't have a serial port terminal application installed, so I did some research and decided on CoolTerm. It's available for every system, and so the Mac install files are right there. And it seems like this is built for hobbyists, as they mention here, hobbyists with a need to exchange data with hardware on serial ports like servo controllers, robotic kits, GPS receivers, microcontrollers. So it just seemed like an appropriate terminal program. So now I had an installed serial port, a terminal program to use it, but I still needed to build that serial 9-pin to 25-pin cable. No idea how. So I had to do some research, and I landed on this page. But looking through all the cables, here's a DB9 to DB9, DB25 to 25, 9 to 25, another 9 to 9, another 9 to 25. So what do I use? I know I don't need a null modem because I have a real serial port and modem, but it's all the DTE, DCE stuff that was confusing. So to make a long story short, this is the cable I needed to replicate. 
It's a straight through cable converting DB9 to DB25 where the DB9 end is a DTE device and the DB25 end is a DCE device. I did some other research and found this link for DTE versus DCE. They basically say a DTE in this case would be a computer and a DCE would be a modem. The names of the signals on the communication connector, such as transmit and receive, are named referencing the DTE or the computer. So the receive pin on the serial cable means you are receiving into the computer, therefore you're at the same time transmitting out of the modem, but it's still called receive on the modem even though it's transmitting out of it because we're talking about the DTE as far as the signals go. So if you want to receive into the computer, you use the receive pin on the DTE side, and you also use the receive pin on the DCE modem side. So down here when they say, if you're using a DTE and a DCE, you use a straight through one-to-one -one cable, meaning transmit on DTE goes to transmit on DCE, receive on DTE goes to receive on DCE, and it takes care of itself. Even though you're connecting transmit to transmit and receive to receive, you really are transmitting out of the modem and receiving into the computer and transmitting out of the computer and receiving into the modem. So this is the cable I needed to make where my DTE or computer side has a DB9 with all these pin names and my modem DCE side has a DB25. So I need to connect DB9 pin 1 to DB25 pin 8, DB9 pin 2 to DB25 pin 3, etc. I connected all nine wires on the DB9 serial cable over to the breadboard and all nine wires go out as well with DuPont headers into this ribbon cable which goes to the DB25 directly to the modem. So now when I turn the modem on we have a clear to send light with cool term installed. I went to options and Originally I only had a Bluetooth port, but now with the prolific drivers I have a USB serial port. So I just arbitrarily set it to 9600 BPS, N81, and I basically just did random things here. It didn't really matter, and I said OK. And then when I connected, it connected at 9600 N81 on the USB serial port and I was ready to try things. But what? What do I do with a modem that doesn't even have a phone line? Well, when I looked up modem commands, I found a link to a document on the SparkFun website for the AT command reference. So Hayes AT commands would be on page 27. So looking through this modem AT Hayes command set reference, there's the command ATI for identification information and you can use these different numbers to get different information. So ATI0, numerical identifier, I don't know what that means, but it will give something. But I notice here number 3, so ATI3 as a command is manufacturer, so I would expect to see some information about the fact that it's a US Robotics or a 56K modem or something. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm ready to go. I shouldn't need a dial tone or anything else just to query the modem with this. And that will tell me at least if the modem is functioning to some degree and not just a $10 paperweight. If I try to type in an AT command, hopefully it works. Even just AT should be good. And it gives an OK, so finally there's communication and I can see the transmit and receive lights on the modem blinking quickly as characters come and go. So without a phone line, if I try to say AT and then A for answer, there's not going to be a dial tone. So the answer light comes on when I try to answer, but nothing's happening. 
and if we try to dial, there's no dial tone, so that won't work, but we can at least see if the modem will attempt to do its normal thing. So AT dial tone 555. And it says no dial tone. That's fine. What we should be able to do is query the modem with the ATI commands. So ATI1, I guess that's some model number info, and ATI3, I believe, should tell me the description of the modem. US Robotics 56K Fax External and a version number. So it looks like the modem is alive, which is a good sign for now. It's all I can test without a proper phone line and another modem to connect to. But I will be experimenting with things like adding a current source of my own onto the phone connection of the modem and seeing if I can get it to connect up to another modem on a different system. That'll be for the future.